Assalamu alaikum. Um, I am back this week. I'm going to be talking about the topic of Muslim women in the West. And I am preemptively going to apologize for being a little bit disjointed. Um, it's a really broad topic. It's really broad. And that was, um, there wasn't a, there wasn't really any context given in terms of what I should talk about. So my brain is a little bit all over the place. Like, what should I, what should I cover? So I might be a little bit scattered and I apologize in advance for that. Um, additionally, I have my phone plugged in right now because it's dying. So if the camera is kind of going all over the place, again, I apologize for that. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it, um, like a, on a steady angle without unplugging it. Also, there appears to be a thunderstorm coming. Inshallah, the electricity doesn't go out. If I suddenly disappear, that's why. So, as I said, today the topic is Muslim women in the West. Like I said, um, really broad, really, really broad topic to cover um, where even to begin. I just got home um, from the store which is why you might say I have mask marks on my face. And I was trying to talk myself through it and gather my thoughts on the topic. Like I said, super broad. So I think I'm going to start um, talking about uh, Muslim women in the West um, in the context of being a convert, and in particular, a new convert. I feel that um, female converts have a really unique experience. Um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of my experience. Uh, I'm not telling my story because that's no one's business, but I'm going to just say a little bit of my experience and talk about how there are certain patterns that seem to play out for Muslim women converts um, in Western spheres. So um, I converted in a small community in Canada. Uh, God, it was 2009, I guess. So 12 years ago, 12 and a half years ago now. Um, and the community was, it was, like I said, it's a small community in the, in the south of the province of Alberta. And they were so sweet and welcoming. I think I was one of not the first actually now I'm remembering there's another but one of the first converts in the area um that had attended this mosque uh it was um the only one in the area at the in the, that city at the time I think there's at least one more now but I don't live there anymore so everyone is very enthusiastic very welcoming um in particular the community was um, mostly Pakistani and Indian. Um, there were also some people from um, Levantine countries, Syria, um, North Africa as well. So it was it was a pretty diverse community. But the people who I was closest to were from India. Um, everyone was very happy, very welcoming. But right away, I was hit with "You need to get married." I was 19 years old at the time, much too young to get married. Um, and, but I, I was a new convert and I didn't know any better. Now these people are not bad people, but it is, a. in fact, they're not only are they not bad people, they're very, very lovely people. They really are. And these, these are some, some of the people who I'm talking about are the ones who helped guide me to Islam. Um, however, this is really the first point I want to come to when we're talking about the experience of Muslim convert women in the West. Perhaps uh, a convert men may also be told to get married. However, the pressure is absolutely greater for women. Um, it, it was presented to me that it is haram to be a single woman, which is of course ridiculous and absurd. 
Um, and I feel this is, this is really, this is something I've talked about before. It's something I've written about for About Islam. And it's something I feel really strongly about. When you are a new convert, you should not get married right away. That is, I feel very strongly about that. Um, sometimes people convert because of a significant other. And that's different. But if you're coming to Islam, and I don't mean because another a significant other forced you, just like because of their influence. And of course, you know, coercion does happen, but I'm not talking about that issue at this moment. Um, I don't know what else to bring thought. But for those who, those people who are, who are not already in a relationship with someone who is Muslim, do not get married within you know, the, I, I've always said the first year, but really the first couple of years I think is better. Um, it is not required. Marriage is not a requirement in Islam period. And I'm comfortable saying that, but it is certainly not a requirement upon entry to Islam that you should get married. So that's, that's the first real theme that I think, um, Muslim women converts, come up uh, come across in western settings now granted i've never been a muslim convert in a non-western setting so perhaps if you convert in a middle eastern north african south asian country or whatever maybe this pressure exists too i'm just speaking from my own perspective and this is all i know um Now, another thing that I've really noticed, and I think that any, that a lot of, um, of other Muslim women who I know would agree with this, a lot of other converts, because I've, we've all sort of, there, there's a little group that, of women converts that I know, and we've all sort of watched each other go through this journey. And this is certainly not, um, this is certainly not universal. This doesn't happen to everyone, but it is very, very common for converts in the West. And this is actually, I think this is for men and women, um, for converts in the West to be pressured into, or to just be taught a really unnecessarily conservative view of Islam. Um, I don't want to go so far as to say extremism because that kind of conjures up, um, images of violence and that that isn't the experience that I have or that I've seen of course it happens it could happen anywhere to anyone but generally I'm just talking about being unnecessarily conservative where the restrictions and rules that you're trying to put in place are prohibitive to the actual practice of Islam um Islam is supposed to be easy and I think that we we converts, we have, number one, we have a lot of pressure to be perfect because everyone is so welcoming and impressed that you decided to convert that you want to be perfect. But also the pressure comes from within. The The pressure to be perfect comes from within. I remember, and I think I've told this story before, one of the aunties in the community where I converted, or maybe it was her, I, I don't know if it was her or her daughter, but anyway, it was one of them. And they said, you know, take it one step at a time. Think of it like a ladder. If you try and jump all the way to the top, you'll fall off. But if you try and climb the ladder, you will get to the top safely. And I listened to what they said, and I discarded it. And I think, I, I mean, I'm not going to call you out by name, but I can think of other Muslim converts. I can think of who they are, who they exactly are by their names. And I think that they have been through the same experience where you want to be perfect. You, you, the, the thing is the feeling of, of converting is so, um, is so powerful that you want to hold on to that feeling. And there's no way that you're going to like, there's no, we are, we're human beings. We're not perfect. And putting pressure on ourselves or others to be perfect is not a good idea. Now, this is not an issue specific to women male converts face the same thing but the topic I've been given is so broad that I I just feel this is a really important um point to touch on um and something to keep in mind too I saw this this meme recently that that said um 
people need to remember that, you know, Eid isn't about celebration and, uh, and enjoyment. It's about worship. And someone responded, you make it sound like the sixth pillar. Or some of you make it sound like the sixth pillar of Islam is to be miserable, something along those lines. And truly that is something that people like, you're not allowed to be enjoying yourself. If you're enjoying yourself, you're, you must not be worshipful. You must not be mindful of Allah. And that's just not true. It's really common. And that's not Islam. Like that, that is some super duper ultra conservative, middle ages christian monk thing that's not islam and it never has been um and again okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna kind of walk away from this because it's not really about muslim women in the west it's kind of about converts in the west and something that we go through um but there are more female converts than male and so i stand i i think that this is relevant let me just check the time Whoops, that's not the time. Okay, I'm sorry for that. I'm checking the time on my Fitbit, but I have another notification I have to get rid of. Okay. Um, I, again, I apologize. It's getting dark. This is the storm that's coming, I guess. Um, so, sorry for the, the lack of light. I positioned myself to have in, enough light, and it's just not working out. Anyway... Um, more towards the general experience of Muslim women in the West. I mean, it's, it's hard to paint with a broad brush uh, on one hand, like everyone has totally different experiences. And on the other hand, it is a little bit difficult for me to comment on because I don't have a ton of experience of being a Muslim woman not in the West. I did live in one of the Gulf countries for a number of years, but I'd never really participated in the culture. Um, I was pretty isolated, just me and my husband. And my husband is not from that Gulf country, but is from the area. And we weren't really involved in the culture at all. And so I can't really comment on that. Something I did learn from having lived in one, two, three, four different countries in my life is the problems of patriarchy and misogyny. They exist everywhere. This is not a uniquely Middle Eastern problem or a uniquely Western problem or a uniquely whatever problem. It's everywhere. It's like the same disease is everywhere, but it's got different symptoms. And that's sort of what, what I learned about existing as a, as a Muslim woman and so sometimes the experiences of women and Muslim women in the West are invalidated because they're saying, oh, well, you know, it, you know, think of, think of the poor women living in XYZ area, you know, they can't even do blah, blah, blah. It's so that that invalidates the struggles that we go through. And that's simply not true. Um, again, as I'm talking, I'm not saying that these problems don't exist elsewhere. But the first thing I wanted to touch on is racism. Uh, again, not a uniquely, not, not a problem unique to women. Um, I obviously do not experience racism. I'm white. That's not something I have to deal with. But we live in a highly racist society. And um, people who are, who are black, who are, you know, any tone that's off... <laughs> that's that's olive skin any sort of brown tone you're going to experience the racism and I feel though racism exists everywhere there's a really unique brand of it that exists here and then as a Muslim woman especially if you're wearing hijab you've got that sort of extra layer on top of it that's Islamophobia and the the thing that we white Muslim women need to remember is if we were to take off our hijab and walk away no one would know the difference but you know a black woman can't take off her hijab and walk away and then be fine I mean there because you can't she can't take off you know she's she's still going to be black and still going to be experiencing racism whether or not she's wearing hijab so that's something that I wanted to bring up just for us white Muslim women to be particularly aware of so there's that um, being a, I mean, being a Muslim woman in the West is, 
I know that everyone's gonna want me to talk about hijab and I hate talking about hijab if I ever hear someone talk about hijab again it's gonna be too soon but I'll talk I'll touch on it briefly um there's this con there's this misconception that um is not entirely untrue but at least partly untrue that um that there's a pressure like that there's a pressure and actually I want to say this is specific to the United States and at least where I live because I know that I, I can't I, I can't just paint with a broad brush about all experiences that are western because different cultures like I'm thinking of France right now where there really is a pressure to uncover I remember one story a while ago that a, a woman like her her modest swimsuit was forcibly removed or something like that at a beach um, but at least in my experience, there hasn't been a ton of pressure to wear less. Is there, is there a pressure to not wear a hijab? I mean, sometimes, yeah, definitely. Uh, again, not in my area, but that's, I live in a really diverse area and I'm really lucky too, so I don't have that. But there isn't this, this wide culture of you need to wear less clothing. That's, that's a fantasy that some non-Western Muslim cooked up like, oh, everyone's going to tell you to be naked. And that's just not true. It's not a real thing that happens. Um, that does exist. There is a mindset that uh, modesty in any form is toxic. And can modesty be toxic? Yes. I mean, depending on your mindset, if you're telling that you need to be modest because the body is something to be ashamed of, yeah, that's, that's toxic. But that, that mindset does exist that modesty in any form, no matter what is toxic. That's, I, I would say that, um, there is among, you know, feminist movements, there are more and more people coming to the mindset that what a woman wears should not be part of the commentary, whether she's fully covered or not covered at all. Um, and that is a much better mindset than the idea that, if you're wearing a scarf on your head, you're being oppressed. Or if you're wearing long sleeves in the summer, there must be something wrong with you. Um, and it's also better than the idea that I don't know if this, if this idea exists in other cultures, I don't know, it might, but I have come across in the West, the idea that if you're wearing a hijab, you must be a better Muslim or you're like on a step, a step higher in your Dean than someone than a woman who's not wearing hijab. And that is absurd. That is absolutely absurd. I cannot tell you, um, sorry, I, okay. So actually I'm going to just derail here because there is one comment that is sort of missing the point. Um, I'm, I'm not a thing in my clothing to be covered up like that. That's objectifying. Um, I'm not a precious pearl and no one said pearl. That's just an example that I've heard before. Muslim women aren't jewels or flowers or whatever to be covered up. That's, that's a bad mindset to have. Um, if we're going to be engaging in modesty in a non-toxic way, it has to be about agency not because we're precious and we must be covered up. It has to be about taking agency over who gets to view what. Um, it has to be about that or it has to be about your connection to God. If you feel that hijab brings you closer to God, I don't feel that. For me, it's a question of agency, but that's not universal. And I'm sorry, I just got distracted by, by a comment. So please, um, I don't want to call anyone out by name, um, but please try and exit that mindset that the reason that a Muslim woman covers and not all Muslim women cover is because we are precious jewels to, to hide away or to cover because that keeps our value high or something. That's, I, I understand it comes from a good place, but it's just as toxic as, as forcing a woman to wear hijab. It's again, same disease, different symptom. Um, anyway. I lost my train of thought because, because of that, but I think that's fine. That was another road to go down. Oh, um, in fact, I think this is going to be my last point before I wrap up. Um, I'm really sorry.
about any gross sounds because I had a sneeze right before I started and I can't get rid of the post nasal drip and it's so gross I'm sorry um but there's this like I was saying there's this idea that um the the more you cover like here I'm I'm at a certain level right now this I'm being I'm being sardonic I don't really believe this but let's say you know cover up a little bit more or even better I you know cover up here and my forehead that makes me even better. That makes me even closer to God. And that's, that is a ridiculous notion. Um, again, this idea may exist elsewhere too. Um, I know that when I lived in Oman, people were particularly impressed that I was a convert that wore hijab. So I'm going to guess this isn't a uniquely Western um, thing that, that happens. I, I imagine it exists everywhere, everywhere, but like I said, the majority of my, oops, the majority of my experience is living in the West. And this is, this is, a I don't know. It's just a particular and weird mindset that exists. Like, you know, you're showing a little bit of hair. You're on this level. You show less hair. You're on this level. Like modesty is leveling you up closer to God. And I just think that's a ridiculous idea that we need to do away with. That's really pervasive. Um, not only from men directed to women, but that we women perpetuate amongst ourselves. And um, it's certainly not a concept that I'm going to be teaching my daughter. Um, so again, this is really, this is really broad. I've been watching the comments and hoping that someone would ask a question so that I would have a particular direction to go to. Um, but uh not, not really. I will say that, um, I don't, there, there is also a mindset that like, if you have the opportunity, you should make hijra to a Muslim country. And I don't agree with that. I actually, for me, for me personally, and I cannot speak for everyone. For me, I like the experience of being a Muslim woman living in the West. I, for one thing, and this is absolutely part of it. This is my culture. This is my native culture. I'm, this is what I'm used to and what I'm engaged in every day and have been for my whole life. I'm comfortable here. It may not be the same for someone who is coming from a different cultural mindset. And that's, that's totally valid. I can only speak from my perspective. Um, but I don't think that it's necessarily a bad experience to be a Muslim in the West. Um, even a Muslim woman, a visibly Muslim woman in the West. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's objectively better to have the experience of being in a Muslim country. Um, for me, Islam is, uh, it's something I think about every day because I'm in a minority here. When I lived in Oman, I never thought about it. It wasn't really part of my consciousness, but I think about it here all the time. And for me, that's been more beneficial to my, to my dean than living somewhere where there are a lot of Muslims. Now, do my kids learn Quran in school? No. Do they learn Arabic in school? No. And you know, that's, that's the nice thing about, about living in a, a Muslim majority area. But for me personally, I just, I enjoy the experience of being a Muslim woman in the West better than I enjoyed living um, in, a, in a Muslim majority country. Um, with that, last thought, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, I thank you for everyone. Um, this has been a, a fairly well-viewed session. Um, if anyone has any specific comments or questions, you can go ahead and drop them below I think is where you'd find the place to drop them um and uh, I appreciate you all for tuning in assalamu alaikum and have a very good rest of your day